Hi, my name is Ryan Gronke. I'm a senior at the University of Florida in Gainesville, Florida, and this project is part of my undergraduate thesis work. It determines the biogas potential at one of the university's on-campus dining halls and also the benefits associated with this project. My advisor is Dr. Ann Wilkie in the Soil and Water Science Department here at the university. Well, for my project, uh, I was determining the feasibility and the potential to produce biogas with food waste from uh, one of the campus dining halls. And what I did was uh, measure the food waste. It was kind of a two-part experiment. I did a waste audit at the dining hall to determine how much food waste they produce, because right now there's, there's no uh, current measure of that. And they have two different waste streams. One uh, is a plate waste, which takes food from, off of uh, customers' plates uh, that they haven't eaten. They return that, and that currently gets uh, mulched in a in a uh, in a food uh, disposal, and it gets sent to the sewage treatment plant. And the other waste stream is from the kitchen, and that just gets disposed of uh, in bags and taken to the dump. Uh, through a dumpster and uh, so far what I've done is measured the plate waste uh, in the digester that was the most easy to obtain and also the most homogenous at the, at the dining hall. So after I collect the food waste I grind it using a, a, a five gallon uh, bucket paint mixer attached to an electric drill and this homogenizes the waste and also breaks down some of the larger pieces. Uh, I then put it in bags, refrigerate it and each day I feed it a certain amount based on the loading rate and also the, the volatile solid content of the food waste which varies depending on which day I collect it and what, what's in the food waste. Uh, currently I'm, I'm feeding it at a 2 grams per liter uh, loading rate of VS, 2 grams VS per liter and I weigh it on the scale and to get my uh, get the, the required amount. This is on a wet weight basis, but uh, it's approximately 30% volatile solids, uh, 30 to 40%. And, and then I take that after I get the weight and I bring it out to my digester and mix it with water. So this is my uh, digester setup and metering uh, setup that I use to feed the food waste and also to uh, measure how much biogas is produced from the system. Uh, and I'll go through the steps of what I do to both feed it and also to measure it, uh, and I do this on a daily basis. Uh, I first take the food waste, uh, it's about a pound or 128 grams of volatile solids, and I put it in a bucket and then mix it with water to meet, to come up to three, meter, uh, three liters, and that's to meet the hydraulic retention time. Uh, it needs to be, on a, it's on a 30 day hydraulic retention time, so for a 90, get, a 90 liter digester, that's uh, 3 liters of feedstock a day. So I feed it into the influent line here, uh, and then this displaces um, effluent of an equal volume, because you know, it's a, it's a closed system, so equal volume in, equal volume out. And then um, I can take the effluent and measure its volatile solids, and that is used to determine the, how much uh, volatile solids have been de uh, destructed within the, within the digester, and that shows how efficient it's working. And um, I also take the pH of the effluent. Uh, digesters generally need to stay around a neutral pH. Uh, the methanogens like a neutral pH. Uh, and then after that, I give it a couple stirs with the mixer, and that's what I do for feeding. Gas, this line right here, when this produces gas, gas is given off through here, uh, travels through this line, and then bubbles into the biogas collector. It bubbles through the water. The so positive pressure within the digester, gas is pumped out there, and the negative pressure of the of the water siphon sucks water sucks the gas out. So gas is collected in here, methane gas, and uh, along with carbon dioxide and generally whatever makes up the biogas. And this is the biogas meter, and this is calibrated to 170 liters. Uh, so far, I haven't gotten produced more than 170 liters, so that's sufficient for now. And 
the, the water level here indicates how many liters of water have been displaced in the collector. So it's equal to the gas produced, and that's what I do to, um, to measure how much gas uh, the digester produces in a day. And I check this at the same time every day uh, to get the daily biogas production. There's many benefits to this project uh, beyond simply making a sustainable, renewable source of energy. Uh, which overall is the biggest benefit. Uh, it can be pumped back into the system uh, to, of the dining hall and they can use it as cooking fuel. Uh, biogas is, is readily convertible and readily burnable by most, uh, most appliances. There might be some slight modifications depending on how much methane content is within the biogas. Uh, but beyond this, there's other benefits including the waste reduction uh, and energy associated with that waste disposal system. Uh, the, the plate scraps are disposed of in the, in the landfill and that has to get trucked and gas has to fill up those trucks. And then uh, in, within the, the landfill, methane is given off and released to the atmosphere, which uh, contributes to global warming. And also the plate scraps are sent to the sewage treatment plant uh, and that takes a lot of energy to treat the food waste there. And if this was eliminated and used in an anaerobic digester system, that load to the to the sewage treatment plant would be eliminated. And also it would be a, a visual thing for, for students to come, because overall this is, this is really just a uh, sort of a display size uh, digester. There are many large digesters out there, but this would be relatively small compared to those. Uh, at the uh, and at the dining hall, uh, diners and students and visitors can come see it and, and see a, a, a closed loop system in action and just see what a sustainable dining hall would look like. Uh, one possibility would be to use the effluent from the digester and send it to local farms and then these local farms can grow produce which the dining hall could then, pur could then purchase and use uh, using their food and then that could again be used to fed the, feed the digester and you would have kind of a closed loop system with that as well as a closed loop energy system. Once the food is digested it would then give off gas that could be cooked to used to cook more food and this would just create a whole uh, sustainable uh, uh, microcosm within the university.